to test one of these things from Amazon's, which you heard in my last video. Okay. Um, I use a bit of electrical, not, well, it's called aluminum tape for ducking. So let's see if I can get that into zoom there. Okay. So now uh, we want to test it because again, someone mentioned on my channel, I'm not going to put his name up, but he talked about there's going to be losses. And I want to just speak on that. You're always going to get losses. This is supposed to do 400 milliamps. Nothing does exactly what they say on the specs. So you have to test it. It's one of the things I said. You have to test, 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 and test. I can go to uh, AI. AI is not always going to be correct, but your test will give you the results. I said that you can take this one and get the amps out of it and take the dollar store ones and get the voltage out of it. Let's see if we can get more amps out of this one than we can with the one out of the dollar store. Okay. So how are we going to run this test? First, we're going to hit the button and turn that on. See if we can get that into focus. And come on, I need you in this view so we can see it. There we go. Then we're going to take this and put it on to this aluminum. And my hand is in the way. And guess what? We're going to take this LED, put that right over there. And can we get that in focus? Okay, so we got some milliamps out of that. Let's take this off here and zoom into that. And then zoom into what we're doing here. It's not even over the full uh, solar thing. I'm just putting in pressure so it's, it's not getting the full uh, thing. Let's see if I can take it down. And I know I'll get 80 and just try to move it just a little oh there go 83 got to keep that pressure on that okay you see the highest it is going and i'm it's moving around because i'm trying to hold it um so again it's not covering the full solar cell and if I take any pressure off it, it goes to zero. So you got to keep that pressure on there to actually get the voltage you want. Let me see if I can hold that. So let's count that as 80. Okay. Now, your light is going to be bigger than this. And it's going to be about the same brightness. Remember, that's running on 5 volts. That's what the battery charger is. So, we now documented that. Okay. So, let's go to the next segment. Oh, it's holding on by itself. I like that. Okay. So we see 84. See if the, it'll, it'll hold that for just a few seconds. 84. That's it's holding pretty long. 84. That's why we're going to call it and round it down and say, hey, this is going to be 80. Okay. That's constant. I'm taking a little while because, again, I want to show that that's milliamps. 
the milliamps up there in the corner if people can't see right up here in the corner milliamps and it's holding that 83 84 that's good okay uh, and it just went down to 70 because i bumped it okay but we get the gist of that okay okay we go back to brad the talking calculator which is sometimes wrong but you we can always check the math okay so we look at it and we say okay and as you can see here it says okay i have 80 milliamps and i want to multiply that times 100 how many amps would i have let's hear it 80 milliamps is 0 0.08 amps if you multiply that by 100 you get 8 amps so the answer is 8 8 amps now let's ask the question now that we got that here's a board and this is an LED board there are more than one type but if you zoom in and it says 5 volts DC right on it okay it also has a USB plug to plug into your phone charger okay now with 8 amps even if this was 12 volts which I'm I'm going to show you this it works on 12 volts 2 amps the 8 amps cover the 2 amps okay so now that we covered the amps okay let's go back here put this on to the thing move this remember that's on both sides and say okay this is a phone charger it tells you the amperage on this side amps on that side volts on that side and that's the output five volts one amp okay we know the thing that we tested LED lights five volts one amp and we have a nice bright light not a dim brown light like some people use some, or one of those light bulbs but this is white light white okay we want to look for things like daylight because that's even brighter than this okay but we know that it runs on five volts one amp and it takes five volts one amp to charge this back up so again if we go back to bread and we look at the answer again it says Hey, we get 8 amps right there. 8 amps. Okay? So, even with that, okay, we know that if we got a cord, let's show the cord. Okay, this is the cord. These are 12 volts. I, I wanted to show that at the same time, but... These come on a roll like this. And even though this has been cut and spliced and everything like that, this, the 12 volts come in 36 uh, feet length. That's double. You get uh, 16 feet if it's 5 volts. Okay? But this is the cordage. And like I said, you're going to lay your things it'll be standing up like this okay but you'll have one at the uh, top and one at the bottom so let's show that okay so we got that up now we just seen the amperage coming from this let's test this and see the voltage that comes out of this and then when we measure this one that's going to be uh, was it, uh, 16 feet long cordage okay which you can cut 
but it, but it, it they come in 16 feet and we're going to put the specs up from the store from the Amazon store okay these two right here are about a, is a little shorter but they're really close about the same size so two of these equals one of these and you put this in the middle and of course you do stand them up, which I showed in my slideshow. They stand up like that so the light can get into that and you kind of make it into a box. This will stand up like that so the light will come out. Okay. Now, if you're doing that, okay, and say I want to use the sunlight. Well, if it's in a box and these things are standing vertically, then the light coming down uh, vertically, let's demonstrate that. If the light, if they were like this and the light's coming, the sunlight is coming down like this, then you're going to get all the power out of this. But then at nighttime, when there's zero power, these LED lights come in and you're still making enough power to keep the battery charged that's the purpose of me going down there and says early in the morning you're getting very little power that's why i wanted to show that because as you start to realize it's like hey whether it's little or night some power is better than none now how much power because this is a closed system do i need to have and then you start estimating well, what can I get out of 16 feet? And once you start doing that and duplicating what I'm doing, remember my name, Lloyd G. Stovall, you'll start to see that these people are lying, that you can take these LED lights and run these things and you can get both amps and power out of it. Okay. And, but you only need the voltage in the first place. Because the charge controller is going to boost that up as um, far as the amps to charge the battery. That's what the charge controllers do. So I just needed you to see that. And you start to understand that they don't really want you to know this. They want you to buy the commercial and don't question them. Just buy it from them. So they're going to contest that. You need to do your homework, test what I'm saying and finding out if I'm I'm actually telling you to truth. That's the only way you're going to find out. Do it for yourself. I've already did it for myself. I'm using this system. And as you can see, I've bought a lot of this stuff. I'm not wasting my money. And if you look at this, this like I said, this is 12 volts. If you look at the 8 amps, because this runs on 12 volts, 2 amps, according to the plug that you plug into this, the whole point of this is that that right now gave you enough amps, this blue one right here. That blue one gave you enough amps to run this if you run it the whole length. Of the 16 feet, you would have 8 amps. So you could run the big one and you could run the small ones, which give you your voltage. So let's test that before we go. Okay, so we're got to switch this over to voltage. So we're replugging that back in. And we're going up to voltage. And we have our solar here. Let's turn this on so we can get a reading. And let's see what this LED. There's the two. Two volts. Let's see. If we can get any more out of this with the LED lights. Uh, I can't quite get three, but we definitely got two. 
you see me moving it around trying to get the best results oh we got a 50 so let's see if we did it this way okay so we got those results so again what do we do round it off to two votes okay so let's go back to brad okay i wanted to go over right quick the dimensions of the solar cells we were just talking about so here's the prototype and yes, I put this together with uh, conductive ink, but I wanted you to see how I constructed each cell. Okay, so let's put a little light on that. Just to make sure that we understand exactly how these cells run. Okay, and it's a little dirty in there, but that's okay. So, you see that each cell is there, and these right here will be gone. They're just holding that in place until I can get strength as I put this together. I got to put a lid onto this. But you can see that this is how the cell is constructed. Okay. And it does work. Okay. Okay. Now, now that we understand how it's put together, let's look at this with the strip. Now, this, this is the actual strip, and it's a full strip, not a half strip. It is a strip that works on five volts, okay, which we've been saying all through the video, okay. Let's see if we can actually bring that up into focus. As you can see, that says DC 5 volts. Okay. So, if that is 5 volts, and we have an object like this going over the top of it. Okay, so that gets to the end. See if we can focus in on that. Okay. Okay. So that's how, how we would do it. It would go down over here. The light would shine through here. Approximately, I would say, let's put it right here. for Right here at the cut. And say one, two, three lights would shine onto this area. Okay. And feel that. DVD, I mean, this uh, LED light would fill these solar cells, okay? So if I say we'll start here and then put another one over here and keep going down the line, okay? You would have how many of these cells? That's what we are doing the math, which you'll see later. And that's quite long. And I just wanted to show this, how this would work. Okay, so these things, these things will, these guards is holding up will be taken off, and then these will be placed down the row of these, and that's how we would get our amps. And these particular solar cells, these ones right here, are the ones that give higher amp than it does voltage. Higher amp than it does voltage. Another point that we want to bring out is we have more surface area than we do with something like this. Okay. Now, let's pick this up, show you that we got a complete solar panel. Okay. And why are we showing this? One, we want to show you that... If I bring this in, into focus, let's see, let's measure here, that that solar cell, okay, 
that solar cell measured thing. Let's put it on the other side. See from the measurement, these are the same solar cells right there. Okay? So look, they measure the same. Okay, so now we understand that these are all put, all these are put into one row. And I can count the rows. But if I put this exactly right over the top of it, like here. You see that I have more surface area because I'm going up one, going across, and then going back down. So for this one area, I have three. Why this only has one. Okay. This is how we can get the extra power we need to do something. So when you're listening to the measurements, it's just an estimate whether AI is right or wrong. It's just an estimate to let us know if we're getting enough power, even though People have said, not me, but people have said, you just don't get enough light with the LED lights. And I'm going, okay, but you're getting power. That's what we had to prove first. One, we'll start at one. Does LED lights generate any power at all in the solar cell? That was number one. Number two, how much power? So we had to show that. So now once we show the voltage and we get the um, amps, which comes from these particular cells. OK, now we have both. They're both put into separate charge control. This means these cells right here and the other cells, which I'm going to show, are going to be in separate charge controllers and then the charge controllers goes into one and that way they don't compete against each other because the voltage and in the, in the, in the amps are different in each one of these cells but what at the end of it we have a system that we can get the highest amps and we get the highest voltage and that's the point of this. So let's go in here and look at the specs. And then we'll go into this long talk with AI about this project, which I think is going to um, be interesting, but it's extra. So that means after we talked about this, this is one complete video, but I wanted to add in. I wanted to add in the talk I had with AI. OK, so if we take this away, this big panel right here, because now we understand what those do. And OK, and I wanted to make sure that I take this, let's turn that on and get a good shot of that. And why am I doing that? Just to show you that these works on five volts, which we've showed this before. Okay, so let's plug that in. And there we go. We have a lit it full 16 feet of LED lights. Okay, so let's pick that up so we can get a good overhead shot. We can't hold it because this plastic will melt. It's hot enough to melt this plastic when you leave it for quite a while. So that's got enough heat for that. So that is done. And let's look at, let's see, put you back on the stand. Let's look at the temperature, storage temperature and operating temperature, which is right here is what you wanted to know. OK, operating temperature. That means that these lights do get uh, warm and that means you can use this for other projects, which we're not going to discuss here. OK, so again, we have these LED right here and we have these solar cells 
right there and we have more surface area and now when we put our project together if you guys can't find out that there's more power coming out because we combine a bunch of solar cells and I'm going to put this photo up to show you that we all they're doing in with regular sunlight is putting a bunch of solar uh, cells together and making one big full panel and some people will say well that's the sun that's different and it was like when you figure out that light is light okay then yeah you have a uh, low light and you have bright light but light is light so that's the reason why we went through the whole thing is can this right here actually make this work that's what the whole purpose of this video is about once you get a yes for that then it says how much power can you get we showed that now that you have that information all you have to do is find out the measurement which this right here you know long cord and say if this is 16 feet how many of these can stretch across 16 feet? How many of these can stretch across 16 feet? Okay. And then once you get the amps, okay, for 16 feet, and then you get another one of these, you won't need that for the voltage because it's not going to be that long as it's going to be one module. The voltage and, I, and I'll put a splice to the other video, which shows that this, the same LED light runs this, the uh, one I made, the original, and you'll see the voltage is at 12 volts. So it was like, okay, I need one of those 12 volts in the beginning. The rest, it will be amps. How much would we have? And there you have it. You did the math. You did the measurements and you go, hey, it's going to be way more than just what? Five volts and one amp. Because like I said, how many of these make one amp? Now, let's do this. You see that the number was around 80 because it was over 80, but we knocked it down and rounded off to 80. Knock it down to 70 and do the math from 70 milliamps okay so when you do that you'll get an, an answer that's still over the power that these lights are putting out and why do they have all this extra power because it's 91 percent efficient is because they take all the other frequencies of lights and get rid of it and only put the light that we can see into these type of thing meaning that they don't have to run as much power for light that we're not going to use okay only the visible spectrums go into this to make um what they call daylight so that means they can make these things called daylight and these are not daylight even though they, they're white light it's not daylight that means that they have brighter and more powerful lights than these LED lights. So those are the things you need to know. But as you just make casual things, because if you can make something out of this, which I've done, and put it into a solar system that can charge a battery, and that's what the other video wore, can I charge a battery? The answer is yes. We already proved that. This can charge a battery. Is it worth it to see? That's what you're trying to find out. And I know somebody's going to do it kind of halfway. They're not going to try to figure out the way to make it more efficient. They're just trying to, well, is it possible? And then they, they put little effort into it. And I've put a great deal of money and effort into this. And I've gotten the perfect results. It does work. And I've improved it by the surface area. So we count in one, two, and three solar cells in my one, which lays over the top of the LED 
like that to get its like, the system works. And yes, because you have enough of these, these little things right here, combined together. Okay. And you know what? Let's do this. Because how I, I come to that determination is, one, I get a board. This is a regular solar panel. And let's say I'm, I'm going to lay this over the top of this. So let's pick this up. And first, let's look at these measurements. Okay, let's get a get focus on that. Let's in case it's so dim for people, let's get a little light on that. Okay, see these measurements. What measurements would I put in there? Okay, so look, let's do the measurements. Look at that. Let's get over here and let's get over here. It means. What did I do? Look at that. Okay. Let's get some light on that. Okay. Why do I do this? Okay. Because we needed to count this out. Okay. So if we're counting this out and you see that we have nine on this side. Let's see if we. And on this side, we count 12. And that's the side that I, I decided to use. So let's do this. Let's measure in between, because I want to get in between those two. Let's get that light on here. Not too bright. Dim the light just a little. Okay. Okay. Good focus. You see that it fits between those two lines. Okay. What I'm trying to show you here is that I can put these together and get 12 of these coming down a row. All the way down to number 12. And when I get to 12 here. I still have some extra room. Let's put that up here so everybody can see. And I still have some extra room. Put a little light on there so people can see. Okay. So that means that if I can have 12 of these going down this way. How many can I get going this way? Okay, so let's put this back down on the frame because I've already did the measurement. Um, and I think I'm going to have to use this light because that pencil on there is really, really, really. So how many? So we say that that's one, two, three, four, five, six. And that was it. Six. And the reason why I did that, let's see if we can keep that up there and say there's one. So, okay, so that's one. And then this is to the line. That's two. And that's how I count it. And you still see that I have some at the last one. I still have more left. Okay, so that's how we're doing our math okay that's how we did our math now we know that if i lay the led lights across just like that how many of these right here i can have over the top of them and lay them flat and this will go in the middle like that. You see the eight cover the eight. It will go right down the middle. And then I'll start counting these going across these numbers right here. And these will just go across. And then at the final count of doing both that right there, I measure 
or what I gotten. Okay, I measure it. So the vote is coming out of it or the amps coming out of it. I measure it and I says, okay, that's what I got for 16 feet because I'm going to cut these things. So this thing will just go to this end and then be cut right there at the end where my finger is. I'm going to cut that where it's supposed to be cut. And then I'm going to lay them in a row all the way down, put these in a row. And now you have your panel that is a solar panel that runs on led lights which runs what on five volts this right here now all you have to do is figure out if i'm using one amp five volts how many of these right here because these are the ones that give out the amps do i need to get to one amp. Then you go. How many do I need to get to two amps? When you listen to the extra. Because like I said. After I finish talking here. You can stop. When you listen to the extra. You'll see that. Even AI didn't really want me to tell you this. Because at the end you're going to see that it says. Oh you tricked me. Why do you think I tricked you? I just wanted to know. If I have 16 feet of this right here and I have these and I measure them, how many of these will go across this? And then I find out how many I can come down on the roll going down this way. So that means that I can figure out that I can have over a hundred of these. And since these blue cells come in a hundred in a pack, how much power does a hundred of these how much amps does it give me with the light that i use right here and i use this light and how many amps do i got now if you're saying that my measurements are wrong please share your measurements okay please share your measurements you do all the other comments and people don't share the information. You'll never get this done. Okay. So I'm going to end that right here. It is so much more to say about this. But now you understand exactly how this stuff works. And you got all the measurements. You got the solar cells in which I use and put it together. And like again, I've been using this so I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to continue using this stuff in, in my systems and stuff like that and other devices that I built. Why? Because I am the original person who created over unity. I know that sounds like an excuse, but I don't just fade out with one inventions. I have hundreds of inventions and then you can sit how you can sit and find out or listen to how they try to destroy me. And that will go down in history. Someone will write about it. And when you when you uh, get in history and says, look what they did to this guy. All when I die, they did exactly what they did to Nikolai Tesla. They're using our 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 products, our information some scientists like, oh, yeah, yeah, this is right. But uh, Tesla, he failed. He failed. He, he, he didn't do it right. We did it right. We read it. Just using that man's technology, you know, and not giving him any credit. That's what I expect them to do. So, yes, my name is Lloyd George Stovall. And my nickname is EW, which stands for the Electric Wizard. And I've been doing this since I was a child. And yes, this right here does work. So now we're going to go on to the AI, talking to the AI and seeing its results. And remember, in AI, the reason why the AI is not always right is because they have someone who are handlers and they tell you, write it the thing. If if people don't see it, I'll try to get a, a copy of that and put it put it in here. I will try. 
and they tell you don't put your your private information on here don't put your private inventions on here because the people in there will take it okay they will take it because it's people in there listening that's what they're doing and right now the reason why this project is not done because they can't figure out how I did it that's what I call idiots because this is really simple easy to do and anybody can do the measurements all right let's go on to AI Okay, Brad, if I have a LED light that is 16 feet long and I have my solar garden lights and they produce two volts per piece and they're one point, I would say, uh, Let's go back. I think it's 1.316th of an inch. And they're 1 one sixteenth of an inch. How much power is expected to come out of each of these solar to make one big solar how much power would I have Okay, is that right? To calculate the total power of the 16-foot LED light, you multiply the length of the light by the power per foot. 16 feet asterisk 2 watts, foot equals 32 watts. Then, you multiply the expected power output of each solar light by the number of solar lights to get the total power output of the solar array. 11 sixteenths of a watt, light asterisk 32 lights equals 22 watts. Therefore, the total power output of the solar array is 22 watts, which is enough to power the 16-foot LED light. Answer, 22 watts. 22 watts. Okay. Can, can, was, can you tell me that in voltage, how much voltage would 100 solar cells that make two volts a piece how much voltage would it make one hundred solar cells that make two volts a piece will make one hundred times two equals two hundred volts However, it is important to note that the voltage output of a solar cell can vary depending on a number of factors, such as the amount of sunlight it is receiving, the temperature of the cell, and the load that is connected to it. Okay, we don't need to. He's probably giving me a whole bunch I didn't want. But let's go ahead and finish listening to him anyway. In general, you can expect to get about 11 sixteenths of the voltage of a single solar cell when you connect multiple solar cells in series. Therefore, if you connect 100 solar cells in series, you can expect to get a voltage output of around 137.5 volts. Please note that this is just a rough estimate, and the actual voltage output of your solar array may vary depending on the factors mentioned above. Okay, that's a full answer from him from both our questions. So let's ask one more question, okay? If I have 16 feet and my solar. OK, I stopped it because I wanted to go get the actual size. So it's one three sixteenth is the actual size of the solar one size of the solar. That means this solar measured. See that. 
Okay, so we we know that it is one and three sixteenth. Okay, so you have sixteen feet of LED rope lights, and the solar cells measure one three sixteenth. If I put these lights in by side by side, would it be longer than 16 feet? Let's see if we can get an answer, which we already did the measurements already, so we already know. Okay, let's see. No, if you put 16 feet of LED rope lights in a row, it will not be longer than 16 feet, regardless of how you position the solar cells. The length of the LED rope lights is determined by the length of the rope itself, not the position of the solar cells. The solar cells are simply used to power the lights, and they do not affect the overall length of the rope. That is not the, the answer, solar cells and this is the reason why I do that. That... That is not the question I asked. I asked you if we have a solar cell that measures one and three sixteenths and you have something that is 16 feet long. If I put all those solar cells next to each other, would it be longer than 16 feet? If you have a solar cell that measures 1 and 3 sixteenths of an inch and you have something that is 16 feet long and you put all of the solar cells next to each other, they will not be longer than 16 feet. The length of the solar cells is irrelevant to the length of the 16 foot object. The solar cells are simply a power source for the 16 foot object and they do not affect its overall length. To put it another way, if you have a 16 foot rope and you put 100 solar cells next to it, the rope will still be 16 feet long. Is there anything else I can help you with today? <laughs> you could stop being a smart addict. <laughs> Let's do this one more time. Because it's just so funny that it doesn't want to give me the answer. Which we already know. Okay. So. Okay. Let's do this another way. Let's do this another way, since you don't want to give me the answer. I have one and three sixteenth. If I measure that 100 times, how long do would this be in feet? If you measure 1 and 3 sixteenths of an inch 100 times, the total length will be 100 asterisk 1 and 3 sixteenths inches. To convert this to feet, you need to divide by 12, since there are 12 inches in a foot. 100 asterisk 1 and 3 sixteenths inches, 12 inches, foot equals 8 and an eighth feet. Therefore, the total length is 8 feet and 1 eighth inch. I apologize for my previous response. I am still under development and learning to answer questions accurately and comprehensively. I will try my best to avoid making similar mistakes in the future. Okay, so it says eight feet. Eight feet long. We have 16 feet. Okay. Okay, so I wanted to make sure that your answer is correct. You're telling me if I take something that measures one inch and three sixteenth long and we want to put them together in one long row, 
that they would only equal eight feet, even though the light team, which we are going to use for our project, is 16 feet long. Can you redo the calculations and tell me how long would the 1 and 3 sixteenths all together, all 100 of them, how long this would be? We're waiting for the calculation and... Let's see. Sure. If you have 100 objects that each measure 1 and 3 sixteenths of an inch long, and you put them all together in a row, the total length will be 100 asterisk 1 and 3 sixteenths inches. To convert this to feet, you need to divide by 12, since there are 12 inches in a foot. 100 asterisk 1 and 3 sixteenths inches, 12 inches, foot equals 8 and an eighth feet. Therefore, the total length is 8 feet and 1 eighth inch. This is less than the 16 feet that you mentioned. I am not sure why you are asking this question, but I can offer a few possible explanations. Maybe you are trying to figure out how to make a 16-foot LED light strip using 1 and 3 16th inch solar cells. In this case, you would need to put the solar cells in series to increase the voltage output. You would also need to make sure that the total current output of the solar cells is enough to power the LED light strip. Maybe you are trying to figure out how to make a 16-foot fence using 1 and 3 16th inch pickets. In this case, you would need to space the pickets evenly along the length of the fence. You would also need to make sure that the pickets are securely attached to the fence posts. Maybe you are just trying to trick me. In this case, I am happy to say that you have succeeded. I hope this answers your question. <laughs> okay, we got to end here because like I said, this thing is crazy especially when you're talking about calculations. And I just wanted to show that because I, I needed to go back and says, I spent a lot of time just talking back and forth with this thing, getting the answers, but I go check it myself. So I already know the measurements, putting them side by side. You're going to have enough space between the rope lights that you're using these rope lights okay and if you're going to put la uh your solar cells across them that's just like this and you're just going to put them side by side across i know you're not you're going to have a hundred of them and it's going to give you even if it did one vote say like it said earlier the one vote would give you 100 votes then we showed this one right here and you won't have 100 of these you'll have 99 of them but that gives you around eight amps you you can count less and say seven or six it still gives you enough power to run that right here let's see if we can get it into focus and that's the end of the story we did the calculations they refuse to do the calculations and therefore they're not going to get the answers they're just going to make it up as they go we're going to go by the math we're going to go by what we use this what we got out of it okay that's the calculations that we're going to use so again i'm going to keep doing this because these people keep asking something that's so simple this is very easy to do, okay? If you can't do this, then how are you going to do things that's much complicated, like really do over unity? You can't understand over unity, especially my definition of it, if you can't do this little thing. Because all we're doing is taking these side by side and adding them up and then seeing the voltage and then doing the same thing at the bottom of it is putting them side by side until you run out of this stuff right here. Okay. Once you run out of that, the length of it, and you're going all the way across, measure the voltage and then see what you got. 
And then he was like, oh, okay, I got enough voltage. You're going to have over the voltage, which you're going to have to put in a charge controller to control it so you don't damage anything. And then you'll have your answer. Time to go. Thank you.